What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom and Eric Sheets Haber. And we have nothing to do here on this Tuesday. So if you haven't watched this yet, you haven't voted yet, go out and vote. Um, and whatever side you're on, I think it's just a good a good thing to do. Uh, but uh, we're going to be talking about this next week of the NFL season. And I'm going to default to Eric on most of the things because uh, he's had a much better NFL season than I have. Uh, so I, I, you know, I monster week last week, third in the millionaire. You got to you know, try you know, better. Listen, we, we, listen, we just we just finished the last thing we talked about. Don't be results oriented. Yeah, before we got here, it said not be results oriented. So just because the just because I had five percent Justin Fields who happened to smash, you know, doesn't doesn't mean I did any better than you did. It's just a, the distribution <laughs> curve was on my side uh, Sunday. How about that? Okay, well, I'll go with that. He, especially because Fields was a guy who I really liked too, and I somehow didn't end up with any of them. So I literally had five percent, and you know, thank you. By the way, more on that. Thank God I didn't pay too much attention to Discord because listen. I, Listen, Adam Perry is like my man. Like, I love him. He's really sharp or whatever. Yeah. But the last thing I looked at before I, I closed down my computer and left for the day, I saw a little back and forth with him and someone else. Adam was saying, oh, dude, by the way, it's, you know, it's Chicago. It's like really, really windy here. So we just not play any of the Chicago Miami game because of the wind. And <laughs> I, I noticed it. And I'm like, before I even comment that, I'm like, maybe I should just add, you know, I'll just ignore it. Thank God. Thank goodness. All right. Well, that, yeah, I mean, that is that is. That's good news. That's good news. Pretty funny, right? Um, of course, it doesn't matter when you're running for 180 yards as a quarterback and you're breaking the record. So something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, we got another like. I yeah, the wind. The wind's not going. The wind's not going to blow blow him over too much. Exactly. Right. Um, and 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 a little little victory lap, a little mini victory lap for Adam and myself, who have been saying for a long time how how good he's going to be, and everybody else is trashing him. It just goes to show you, stop trashing these 21 year olds. Now this guy's the hottest commodity. You probably couldn't. I mean, there's probably six guys in the NFL that you wouldn't trade instead of him. Like for him, he is literally he's, he's on the he's on the rise. He's not there yet, but he's on the rise anyway. Well, you know, let's 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 carry that on one step further because it's it's something that you said not just about Justin Fields, uh, Justin Fields, yeah, Justin Fields, yeah. but but in all sports, you know, um, you know, with baseball specifically, but basketball also, you know, th these rookies are very volatile, you know, and and, mm -hmm. and volatile is 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 good. For, for for what we play DFS, you know what I mean? It's good for G, GPPs. And, and you know, I would rather play a guy who we're just not exactly sure if he's good or not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But has upside as far as that that assessment goes, then I keep coming back to him. But as opposed to like some Kyle Lowry, you know, who I know exactly what he is. You right. know what I mean? Like right. precisely right. what he is. He'll have like his little screens, but we know what he is. Like to say like after a year, oh my God, who's playing Justin? You know, Justin Field's a bust. This then the other thing, uh, yeah. Darren Kellenic or whatever. Like, all, all these rookies that like after like like two games, you're like, oh, guys, guys, the worst, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> right. Just, you know, like, just you know, just keep saying that, you know, yeah. and, and let, let let other people try to take advantage of it. So I hope other people just just go without those things because I I think it's just so overly blown and it's always has been in sports, but it's gotten my, the the media scrutiny and the attention, especially in basketball. They just, people just give up on everybody. It's like someone the other day, you know, in the discord just saying how horrible Jalen Green is. And I'm just like, the guy's 20 years old. You know what I mean? Like right. he's going to go out and score 50 points many times in the NBA in a single game in his career. Like it's just, it's just very weird to, to judge these guys. Well, so I, I, ch I challenge you to look at the first couple of years of uh, Troy Aikman. You know what I mean? Yep. Like it's yep. uh, three and 13 and one and 15 for Dallas. Yep. Yep. Um, absolutely. All right. Well, let's get into the NFL slate. Cause th this is a, um, I just, just an overall, I just don't think that anybody, uh, you could argue the Eagles, Bills, and 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 KC are all good. I don't know if anybody's really that good in the NFL. Um, and I don't know that there's anybody really that, like. Well, let's, let's, let's really call it what it is, right? So we said, go, you know, we said that there are only three teams that we found are legitimately better than the others. It was Buffalo, Kansas City, and and um, Philly, Philly. Philly. And Buffalo lost, and yep. Kansas City was on their hands and knees to to, yep. to, to beat a team with literally no quarterback. Yep. You know, so so it's it's it is as they say, it is rough out there. You know, and all these everybody's vulnerable. NFL is very, you know what I mean? Like NFL is a lot going on in an NFL game, and like you get you get a I, I go back to this Kansas City game. I mean, I hope people realize what almost happened in that game. Kansas City had not a didn't have a quarterback. I think they had two targets to wide receivers. Yeah, like you know what I mean. It was it was ridiculous that that. And, but you know what? They had they have a great coach who mm -hmm. put together a plan. Their defense went and it's so funny. Like Chris Collinsworth, he sometimes is what it is, but but he made a couple of great comments about about Tennessee. It's like it's like Tennessee committed some like 
illegal contact penalty, you know, they give an automatic first down or whatever. And he says, to be honest, I really don't think they care at all. You know what I mean? Like, this is what they do. They want to be scrappy. If they get the, get if they get a penalty from down there, they really could care less. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. this is this is the way they're not gonna win a game against Kansas City without committing some penalties. You know what I mean? Like, right. like, like yeah. you sit back and not, don't commit any penalties, you're gonna get shredded. You know what I mean? Right. And, and and that's a great example of identity sometimes being able and it didn't work, they didn't win that game, but it's I mean they they, they won really they won good. enough. You know, they were a hundred point underdog and they lost it over. But you know, last year, I think it was they beat Kansas City like twenty nine nothing in KC. They they, yeah, in, they in, have in, a way in the, in, the, in, the, in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they have a way of scheming for teams, and they have an identity that sometimes is enough to win in the modern day NFL. No. Anyway, so with that, which we should pull up your screen and go game by game yeah. here. It's a very early look to remind everybody, but it's good to get you set up. And if you want to look early in the week, there's not a whole lot else to look at today, sports wise. So uh, Sheets might disagree with me because there might be some sort of LOL slate that I don't know about. No, it's the biggest <laughs> hockey slate of the year. They did it on purpose. They, oh, the hockey's like doing 50, it, huh? Like fifty, like fifty thousand for first for their contest. They weren't stupid. And, yeah. and everybody's playing, so yeah, I'm 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 in there. I'll be I'll, I will be uh, probably live to do that uh, a little later today. Maybe we'll see. I appreciate that. I, it's, Tuesdays are going to be a little bit tricky for me, a little bit going forward. I should be able oh, okay. to make it every day for live, but I'm I'm going to try. I have a Thousand Oaks one o'clock firm appointment every Tuesday, but I, can I get to LA right? fast enough? Okay. To, can I get to a Starbucks fast enough? I think I can do it after my appointment. So, well, again, right, if, so I know, if I know that Tuesdays are going to be the tricky day, then then I could I could rearrange my stuff to maybe make Tuesday all you know work all the time. Okay, but, yeah, yeah. It's it just I, I'll do my best. I, my current plan is to try to make it work. Um, but oh, here's, right, here's, another thing. I wanna, here's another thing. I want to throw this out in the ecosystem. This is the uh, this is the, uh, the the Bobby theory that if, that if you want to make something happen, just throw it out in the environment. And, and <laughs> so I want you to watch for something. So it's possible that I might be putting out some packages on State Kings. Um, oh, but yes. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but but I know we talked like sort of about it. So I figured if I just put it out there, it'll motivate us to actually do it. Um, Absolutely. I, I wrote it. I wrote Ethan already and said, we're going to try and do it. So, yeah. So, and again, like just, just for people to, first of all, just for the people, if they want to sweat along with what I'm doing, I think it's cool. Uh, I'll, and what I want to do is I want to kind of think of cool ways to make that sweat, you know, more entertaining some way. Yeah. And the other thing is it actually will actually probably keep me playing better. You know what I mean? Like I won't do stupid stuff. I like put in like lineups and then leave for the night without checking my line. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like yeah. If, I, if I know that other people are counting on me, Maybe I'll play. Maybe I won't make those those types of mistakes. But well, I, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't encourage you to adjust your style too much. It's working a little too well for you. But at the same time, I, I do think that there is something to that, and, and it, it it's it sort of furthers the idea of a real sweat show. And 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 you know, on State Kings, you could put it right in. We could we could Twitch live stream. We could we could we could go live on our restream thing. I, I'm open to definitely doing that part of the week. So with that said, we'll jump into the NFL again. Very very early look. Uh, Minnesota Buffalo is the first one you got right. Yeah, and, and, and probably the and, best one. <laughs> and right, and right, right off of the bat. Um, so I have Buffalo rated number. And this is early, right? So I have Buffalo actually rated everything considered number two um, this week. Um, I have like a kind of a. I have one team that's ahead of everybody else, and I have one, two, three, four, like a whole bunch of teams, kind of like second through whatever in my value rankings or whatever. Uh, and I have Buffalo, one of them. Um, I do think that, um, boy, I, I feel ba- now I feel bad for the Vikings, but the Vikings have been playing well. They have a bunch of wins in a row. I, I'm sure the Vikings are not happy that they're getting the Bills off a loss. You know what I mean? Because, uh, because uh, you know that that's you know the Bills are going to come out. They're going to come out firing. Um, yep. Coming off the loss of the Jets, which we both said we, they were very, the Jets were very live. Absolutely we both said that. I don't know if they're going to win, but both but, but we both thought they were live and. I think Buffalo is going to come in really, really strong, and they're going to put up a bunch of points. And I think they're really not, not to, not to mention digs against Minnesota. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of good stuff going on there for for Buffalo. Mm-hmm. So I, I, you know, right off the bat, I like Allen. I don't know what his questionable tag is, but um, what did he do? He got elbow injury. Uh, uh, yeah, I well, mean, that I, would be that would be sick if he were out. Yeah, I think I mean my guess is that he probably plays. Uh, but you know, it's it's hard to know this early in the week how serious that really is. Also, I don't know. The Buffalo has a his they do this with Josh Allen all the time. Every time he gets the little oh injury designation, every time they have a he has a, a lousy game. Yeah. So uh, you know, and, and and I just you know, overall I just I really think that like as good as Buffalo is, they're they're pretty much front runners. Josh Allen's numbers in close games are really okay. bad. Um okay. 
So it's, 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 you know, it's just kind of interesting to think about outside of like, you know, of course the conference championship game versus KC or whatever that was, that was a, or the one that should have been a conference championship against KC where they were really, really good. Um, where he was really good. But I, I, I do think like a team that can't run the ball at all, it's just hard not to have them as a priority because they, they, they're going to put up, you know, probably 400 yards passing in this game. It's really hard not to have Buffalo as one of the highest teams, especially um, against the Minnesota defense that I don't really know. Like Minnesota, I'm not impressed by any of their wins yet. They're here. They are one of the top teams in the NFL. And I don't think anybody particularly thinks that they're great. I like every piece of this game. This is the, the I think, my favorite game on the slate, and it's rare that we start off with the, the best one. Uh, you got Jefferson, Diggs, all kinds of stuff. Guys traded for each other. Thielen is, is, seems a little cheap at 5,400. I like uh, Allen and uh, probably not going to play Cousins, but I'm certainly going to take some shots a, against even a tough Buffalo secondary. Um, but maybe that, maybe that will be TJ Hawkinson. They threw him the ball a bunch the first week. Um, maybe the double tight end thing will finally pay off the knocks and the other tight end. I keep trying it with Buffalo every week. Never quite, quite works. And then I think even, even a guy like Singletary is somewhat in play just for the pass catching side of things, but I don't love that. Um, but, but this is a game I, I plan on being very, very overexposed to with the normal, uh, Allen to Diggs thing. And I, and I'll, at the same time, I also will throw some with Gabe Davis in as well. And I'll throw some with Gabe Davis in alone because, uh, I just feel like Gabe Davis he might do nothing four weeks in a row. And then he has, you know, like he did in the conference championship game, five touchdowns and 200 yards receiving or whatever. Um, He's still really talented. So I, I, this is a really high target for me. Uh, I haven't checked the weather yet. It's too early in the week, but it's the only thing that could keep me off this one. I'm not getting, I'm not getting to any of the the running backs really in this game, at least on the early, the early look, but, um, but uh, yeah, uh, I think, you know, listen, the the runbacks from Minnesota are are, are open and obvious. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. Any of any of them, like Jefferson or Th- or Theo and or I mean even Irv Smith, you know whatever. Um, I'm not getting to Dalvin Cook right now, um, but uh, just just want to remind you that Irv Smith is out, and also that oh. T.J. Hawkinson they made the big trade for T.J. Hawkinson. Oh, that's right, that's right. That's so, yeah, right. just throwing that out there. That's right. Um, okay, so I have a question for you. I mean, you know, listen, I'm, I'm a whatever, but who who to thunk that it's that that the Detroit Chicago game. Could be like the the offensive nuts. I, I don't know, especially mm-hmm. in Chicago. I, I don't know, but uh, all I gotta say is I, I know what I saw last week. I mean, it's seventy points up on the board, and actually could even could have even been more. Um, uh, we talked about this. I, it was you know just before. I mean, the, listen, like it or not, Chicago's got it running. For, for, forget that they 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 won that game with a lot of points. When I don't think they won, but, but they played that game against Miami. Yeah, they Dude, a couple of weeks before that, they put like a thirty ball up in New England. You know what I mean? Like this is this is this team is this team cranks, and then thirty and, against the other best defense in the NFL, Dallas, the next week. Yeah, I mean this yeah. team cranks. You know, yeah. and um, um, and the, and now <laughs> they're up against Coors Field of defense. You know what I mean? Not not at Detroit, but yeah, they're they're up against Detroit and. Boy, oh boy! I mean, why not? So, so, uh, right? Same, same guys. Uh, Fields, Mooney, my 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 hero, Cole Komet. You know, I wouldn't model him for you know twenty three fantasy points, but 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 hell, I mean, why not? And then Detroit, the usual suspects. You know, with with uh, Amon St. Brown, Khalif Raymond, same same dudes. I'm 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 kind of in there. Yeah, I, I'm in on this one, too. This is my probably one of my other favorite games. And I'll, I'll immediately just say that I don't know what the weather is going to be in Chicago. And again, this time of year, you do have to look out for I hope, I hope it's bad. Who cares? Let's go. Yeah, but it looks like another one that it just feels like we should be smashing the over on. I, I just don't understand why it's as low. What as is the over on, like 48 or something? Yeah, it's 48. Um, uh, yeah. But 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 I I just think that, I mean, like you said, Chicago has been going kind of nuts against real defenses and tough games. Detroit, uh, you know, they give up the most points in the NFL, even after – somehow only giving up nine to Green Bay. Um, I think you start like St. Brown. I think it'll be one of the most popular guys this week. I, I yeah. like him. And I think that you you just pair. I, I think you still are want, want to probably skinny stack for the most part. I don't mind a double stack. But, uh, you know, Cole Komet is 3,400. He had finally got the two touchdowns last week. Uh, maybe he's coming into his own. They raised the price on Mooney, which is irritating. But as I as I sort of thought, I think Claypool does open up more for Mooney. And, and it certainly opens up more for Fields. So I really like this game as a stack, especially the field side of it. Um, more than I do the golf side, but I don't even mind the golf side, to be honest with you. The tricky part is all the running, the, the, these these are like the captains of the, the the split running back teams, right? You have Williams and Swift, and then you've got Herbert and Montgomery. 
there's nobody gonna gonna look good enough for me to probably play unless somebody's out. But I, I, I'm all into the passing game so far. I, like we've got a lot of passing game stuff and no running backs yet that I've really been excited about. But I do think these are two really good games. And uh, immediately, I just love the over, which for some reason Sabersim actually hates the over right now. But we'll see about that. Uh, well, well, I, I, I got a running, I got a running back for you. Okay? okay. So, so, so I have to tell you something. Kansas City better be careful, or they could be in another freaking tough game this week against Jacksonville. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, Kansas City's offense did did not. I would say did not look great. It was it was literally the Patrick Mahomes show in like yeah. the second half. Like he literally single handedly brought the team back. Okay, um, one third and twenty, he rushed for twenty two yards. You know, all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Um, not not to mention that remember Casey. You know, their defense held in the second half. But remember, they were facing a team with 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 literally one player. Okay, Derrick Henry, who basically they didn't really. And there was one. There was one drive where it started differently. Like Derrick Henry rushed for eight yards in the first drop, first, first, first uh, on the first play, ten yard holding penalty. Which, g- given the way Tennessee's team was made up, give it a ten yard holding penalty, you may as well punt right away. You know what I mean? Like they're not making up first and twenty. So, so, so they're they're going against Jacksonville, and and Travis Etienne has got it freaking going. You know, and and, and I think that they're gonna. I think they're gonna be able to put up points on Kansas City, and I think Jacksonville's defense isn't bad either. Um, so I think this game could be competitive, uh, which means, uh, that, that, that I think we should, we should try to figure out something to do. I, the Jacksonville side is easy. I mean, I want to play Etienne mm-hmm. and then I want to play, what's his name? Uh, the, the Lawrence with, with the, those guys at Kirk and Zay Jones or whoever Kansas city, as usual, it's kind of tough to figure out who to play, but Kelsey's seems like a good football player. And I think that I'll tell you who's really bad. I'll get to him in a minute, but. But uh, Hardman, it looks to be a guy he's looking for. Robbie Anderson. Wait, what is Robbie Anderson on Kansas City? What team is Robbie Anderson on? Arizona. Right. Uh, we're gonna get to them later, maybe. Because Robbie Anderson is literally the worst freaking wide receiver in football. I mean, he's <laughs> he is legit the worst. He's still I mean, the kind of guy you hate too. And, and you know what? Every all the FS people tried to make him work like for like two years in a row, and they, they couldn't make it happen. And then he finally gets in a perfect situation in Arizona. He literally had like three wide open drops. All right, and 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 a, and a penalty, guys. A guys, a disaster. Anyway, um, I like this game a lot, and as usual, I don't know what to play on the Kansas City side, um, but um, I think this game is going to deliver. I, I love the so, like, I can't find a game script where where Etienne doesn't get there. You right, know, right? Um, we haven't even seen him as the pass catching back, which is sort of what we thought we'd see more early in the season, and he's still just crushing. KC, you obviously can run the ball on KC. Um, they're 29th in the league and against the run. And even if they're down, Etienne's still going to be on the, the field catching, you know, catching passes. So I, I I'm all, I'm on board with that. I like, I like one of the receivers, uh, from, from Jacksonville. My preferred option would be Kirk, obviously, but I don't mind if you want to go down to Zay Jones. Um, I think it's reasonable. It's not my most exciting thing. Um, and even Marvin Jones, just keep in the mix if you're going to stack the game up, but, uh, it's weird that we're starting off with some games to, to really like, cause I, I yeah. played initially, I didn't think I was going to like so much. I think, I think Kelsey's the obvious one from, from J- the KC that's hard to, hard to ignore uh, Jacksonville for what it's worth. Pretty good against pretty, pretty, you know, decent enough linebackers, pretty good against the tight end spot, but Juju is, uh, they're looking for him a lot. Um, he's had 20 targets his last two games and he's put up 20, you know, 19, 28 and 25. I'll I'll play him at 6K. Uh, so I, I I do like this game a little bit as well. I don't think I'm gonna I I may end up playing Mahomes, but it's we're getting into a really crazy price point. I mean, for a guy who doesn't really carry the same rushing upside, I would say. Although this year he has more, and he had 63 yards rushing and a touchdown last week, so he had it done on the ground and in the air. Um, so maybe I will play some Mahomes, but I, I definitely like the other pieces in this game, and I'm I'm okay with taking shots too on on both Hardman or MVS. Because because we don't know which one to play ever, they don't seem to get owned, and I think Hardman is probably the answer. But I uh, I, I think that the, you know getting some low owned MVS is in there as well because hard it's just hard to find cheap receivers and these guys because they play with Mahomes have just a massive ceiling. So I uh, I'm into this one a little bit as well. I think we may have named my my favorite games, and I don't know if I'm going to have as much to say on some of these other ones. Uh, all right, Sheets, what do you got next? The so uh, Cleveland, Miami. So, you know, Miami, you know, they, 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 uh, they can get it going. They can give up points too. I just, 
I just and in Cleveland was in their last game. They had they played a really really nice game, right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, they who did they shut out? They shut out somebody. Oh, uh, no, they they beat Cincinnati. They beat the brakes off of Cincinnati, thirty two to thirteen. Um, I don't. I just don't see Cleveland in these types of. I don't, I just don't see Cleveland in shootouts. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't see it that way. I I just feel as though they'll they'll do what they have to do. Give Ch- Chubb the ball. Chubb's too expensive for me. And then Miami, you know, th- these guys are just a little bit too expensive, I think. I mean, they're showing up as a decent stack. I mean, like fifth on my board or whatever, but you got 9,100 and 7,800 of your two guys. I mean, it's it's a lot to get to against the team who's not that, who's not bad. Um, I'll probably, I don't know, but it's hard to, it's hard to say that I don't like these, the, the, the hill and whatever, but I think I'm, I think they're just going to be too expensive for you to prioritize, but this is really early look. Yeah, so so it's really it's tough with Miami. So you've got the the the, the running backs in the backfield that are formerly the 49ers running backs, right. Mostert and Wilson. Um, kind of funny that they're doing that. And my yeah. fear came true last week because I did play some Mostert to try and get off some of the chalk at running back. And Jeff Wilson got the yeah. actually I think he might have got a little more work than 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 uh than Mostert did. So I'm canceling out the running game. I, I think it's really hard not to want to play one of these receivers if you can afford them every week. Tyreek yeah. Hill is having the greatest season in the history of football for uh, for a receiver, and it's just hard to ignore that for me. <laughs> um, and he and it's like he, he's basically scheme proof unless they're going to like completely double. Even if they do that, he still gets open. But you got Waddle on the other side. I, I think playing one of these guys is probably a a reasonable thing to do. But they're just really expensive, so it's hard to get to. And then it's hard to get to a game stack because if you want to play it, you might want to run it back with Chubb or something like that. That doesn't feel great. I do think Cooper's in play at 6,500, but that's not cheap either. All of a sudden, you've got a really expensive game stack. Um, so I'm not necessarily interested in so much in stacking this one, but I do think that getting one of the Miami receivers is probably going to be like my only priority at the first look, and it's probably going to be Hill, but I'm going to have to go way out of my way to uh, to try and make that happen because it's, it's really expensive. Um, the only other thing in this game that might be kind of interesting, just because Miami, I've been watching how bad they are against the middle. If Njoku's back in, I think I would take, I would, I would consider some Njoku at tight end. Um, that's pretty much all I have here, but I, I think it's an interesting game, but I, I don't, what's it got a, got a better total than some of these other ones. I just, uh, I think Miami could beat the brakes off of them, uh, to be honest with you, but their defense has been suspect. So I don't know. I'm, I'm open to going another route. I just personally am, am. This is this definitely just falls just outside of my top tier of of games to stack. The um the Giants are home against Houston coming off the bye. Um I I don't really regard the Giants as particularly good fantasy wise, unless you get a situation that Barkley is, you know, really, really cheap. Um and I don't I don't find him really cheap. So I'm probably gonna be off the Giants as far as fantasy goes. The on the Houston side, Pierce is really, really good. He um he rates early on, at least, to be best value, or at least close, with the, with the running backs. And uh, so I, I would play Pierce. It's not the greatest, I guess, not the greatest environment. Um, uh, I, I do. I think that is going to be kind of a low-scoring game, uh, Giants-Houston. Um, but Pierce is going to be just one of those, you know, chalky running backs, I think, that's going to get there. You know, um, that's that's where, I'm, that's where I'm at. He's not like going to – I don't think he's going to have an enormous game, but I think he'll have – a good enough game to get there. That's the best I can describe it. And I really don't have much else in this game. Yeah. Um, I think that the most interesting part of this game is both running backs, uh, Pearson, Barkley. The the issue you get into with Barkley at 8,600 is let's just say a Barkley versus Tyree kill. You know what I mean? Cause a lot of people right. running back in the flex and you, you, I mean, Houston is the worst run defense in football. So Barkley looks like a great play, but Tyree kill at 500 more. You have Barkley who's put up, who's been great this year, but he's only put up, I think one game of 30 fantasy points. Whereas you have Hill, who I think who's put up six. Um, it just feels weird to make that one play over the other. So if you're going to spend way up, I would prefer Hill as the, as the guy you do it for, but Barkley certainly, you know, just on its face looks like a really, really good play. I've been impressed with the giants run defense. So I'm a little nervous because I love Damian Pierce. Um, he's been good. He's been consistent. And he's cheap, so I, I think he's a I think he's a good play, but I I just want to you know don't 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 be surprised if this is one of those Giants defense gets it done and 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 they just you know force them to try and beat him through the air, and I don't know if Davis Mills is capable of doing that uh, in this one. Nothing really standing out for me from a tight end position or a receiver's spot. I think that it is really interesting that you've got everybody so cheap 
but these are both good pass defenses also. And who the hell knows what to do? I mean, the Giants haven't had a receiver have a game all season, and yet somehow they're, you know, they've been pretty, pretty good. Um, I guess maybe going back to an a low on Wandale Robinson might be my favorite thing, or or maybe play Brandon Cooks, but I don't honestly feel very excited about any of it. All right. Uh you got New Orleans Pittsburgh. Why don't you start it off? Yeah, so Andy Dalton looked atrocious last night. Um and uh I I I really don't know what New Orleans is gonna do quarterback wise. I don't know if Winston's healthy. Um, but if he is, I, I can't see any reason to not give him a shot, if you want to know the truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh that's 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 my opinion. Uh I, I I would much I mean my clear choice in this game is Alvin Kamara. I mean, and, and he pro- for me, I think that he's a much better play than Pierce or pretty much every other running back because mm-hmm. based on what I just said, I mean, you know, they're obviously not going to put the ball in the hands of freaking the passing game, you know, with Dalton. Um, and so it's either, you know, uh, do something with, uh, with, with Taysom Hill or whatever, or just, just feed Kamara with all that Kamara can do. And listen, listen, Pittsburgh is, they don't have what's his name back yet. Uh, TJ Watt, he's going to be back soon. Uh, he, they just, they cleared him to, to, to come off of the injured reserve. So he's got, they got three weeks to activate him. Um, but, uh, New Orleans is, you know, they, they, they look really, really bad at home. They'd like to get a win here. So I, I do think that Kamara is is certainly a good play. And I have to say that I'm not really getting this projection-wise, but I have, this, I have this weird feeling that the Pittsburgh offense is live somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, New Orleans is on a short week. They're coming off a Ravens game. They're going to take this game lightly. They're going into – well, lightly. They're going into Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh always plays hard. And I will say this. That that picket for listen, I don't think he's won yet. No, um, but I actually did. He got no, he did, did not get the win against Tampa. That was Trubisky. Yeah, I mean, when he's in the game, I mean, like he, he looks pretty, he looks decent. I mean, and look, it's not easy going into Philadelphia for his for openers, you know. And he was one possession away from winning in Miami, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I feel as though New Orleans kind of was kind of like on the ropes a little bit, and I think the Pittsburgh. First of all, is extremely live to win. I mean, I definitely think they're gonna win. But I think they're I think the offense is is is, is weirdly live. I like I like obviously what's his name, the Pickens, um, and also Deontay Johnson. And who knows? I mean, that could I mean, you wanna wanna win a million dollars? I don't know. You wanna play Pickett, Deontay Johnson, and Pickens and, and run it back with, with Kamara for New Orleans, or maybe Olave just for funsies, you know what I mean? And 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 let this game go off. Uh listen, <laughs> I, I'm looking back at Minnesota, Buffalo, Detroit, Chicago, Jacksonville, Kansas City, whatever. Obviously, this game is not as good as those three and maybe some others. But I don't know. For, for If you're feeling saucy, I, I have no problem with this. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, I, I like the pieces more than I do the game stack. But okay. I, I think Kamara is going to stand out as a really good play. And I, I, I'll just say that, you know, the way Pittsburgh has been getting killed is mostly through the air, but on the ground as well enough. Um Defense has started to look a little bit better the last few weeks. Both running backs are look. I don't care about how bad he's been. Najee Harris is fifty five hundred. Um, yeah. He could he could have ten catches in this game. It wouldn't surprise me. He should get a boost. All of these guys. I know we didn't see it yet, but should get a boost without Claypool, right? Like Pickens, yep. Johnson, and and uh, and Najee. I think all. I think I think you play. I think one of those guys are going to be you know gonna gonna end up being great value on the slate. I don't know which one yet. Early look, I would probably lean Deontay or uh, Najee. And then uh, on the other side, you, you've got a, a really nice Kamara and you've got a, you know, maybe, I think Alave is probably a little higher than I'd want to spend, but I, but I but I could get to this. I could get to the, those pieces of this game. And uh, the only other one I want to add here is if you're going to play a stack of Pittsburgh, I think I would include Fryermuth in it. Um, yeah. Yep, I, yep. I like, I like him. I like this price and he does get work. Um so that's that's pretty much the only thing I've got. The only problem is, as I mentioned every week, every year, New Orleans always rates in the top three against the tight end spot. Um, okay. But somebody's going to – there's going to be passes to go somewhere in this one. So uh, I think one of the Pittsburgh receivers or Najee uh, are going to be a priority for me. Right now it's looking like Najee or Deontay Johnson. Um, and, and then on the other side, Kamara, of course. All right. Denver, Den- Tennessee. Denver, you- Tennessee is going to be seven to six. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know who's winning. Um, listen, 
I'll say this: if, if Denver, the 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 coach has been you know facing some some heat this season, whatever. But I will say this: if if they do not put like seventy two guys in the box against Derrick Henry, then he could literally like pack his bags and leave like after the game. Okay, <laughs> the whole universe saw that Tennessee has literally no passing game right now until. Yeah until they get a quarterback back or so whatever it is, you know? So it, it's, this, this is, this is really, I mean, what do I have for Tannehill? Tannehill, it says nothing. All right. So if Tannehill is back, then, then maybe whatever. But aside from that, I mean, I, I would, I wouldn't play Derek Henry in a, in a situation where the entire world is going to be stacked in the box. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm just not interested. The, 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 and on the Denver side, I just, I just, it just feels like a, just a really just slow game, you know. Look, you can make the case Wilson's been better. He's got the he got the guys to throw to and Judy and when and 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 Sutton. Tennessee's defense is no freaking joke either, you know. I I I have I just don't think you should mess around with this game. Yeah, I'm not very interested in this game uh, either. Uh, I don't I, look if you wanted to play a, a cheap Sutton or Judy, that's fine with me. I'm not going to argue with it. Uh, probably the my favorite play would probably be Dulcich the tight end um, for Denver. That's, you know, he's put up double digit games in all of the games he's played in. He's got some, some, some background. He's, you know, he's, he's going to be decent in this league probably for a while. So that's probably my favorite. And then I I sort of have, I have the same, but well, okay. I agree that it seems like hard to play Derrick Henry when you stack everybody there. The problem is we see it all the time with him. And all that happens is he ends up breaking out like two plays where he ends up running for like a 50 yard touchdown and like a, another 60 yard gain or something. And he gets there that way. He gets three yards, three yards, 60, you know? Um, and, and it's just hard to ignore. Like this is the time where he goes crazy and he's put up what he hasn't put up, put up 20 fantasy points in seven games in a row, but the price is a little bit leaves a little bit to be desired. So um, yeah, probably a game you don't really want to have that much interest in, but I, but I do think Derek Henry is definitely on my list. I'm not going to cross him off yet. And uh, again, not no issue with the taking a shot at with one of the Denver guys, but I think you're probably you're, you're certainly not stacking up the Denver side of this. <laughs> That's I don't think you want to you want to play the passing game in this type of a situation. I think you just want to stick with that that running game think, on your side. I think I think I think the three late games are all very compelling for different reasons. Okay. Um, I guess we'll start. I'll start with Indianapolis and Las Vegas. So I know it's not right to say you know quarterbacks bad or be young or whatever it is. I will, I will just say this, that, that Indianapolis had the lowest like per yards per play of any team for the whole season in the entire league uh, last week. When you, when you have, when you have no, when you have no, no, whatever, when you have Ellinger and no Jonathan Taylor and you're against New England on the road. I mean, that, that's, that's, I mean, that's a recipe for disaster and that's, that's what ended up happening. You know, mm-hmm. um, Jonathan Taylor, I don't know if he's back or not. And, and certainly you could, um, you can make the case that that Ellinger can improve, but I, I just I don't know. I, I just have this feeling that that they're gonna they, they, listen. They just they just got a new coach, right? Jeff Saturday was was announced coach, and they, they don't even know. I, I saw this 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 tweet that they their first meeting is going to involve figuring out who's going to call the plays. Like they don't even know who's going to call the plays. <laughs> There's not a coach on the coaching staff who has called offensive plays for an NFL team. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. So, so that's a problem <laughs> to say, to say the least. Um, now you have Vegas who just, who just can't close out a game, you know, uh, they can't, and they, they are two at six. Okay. Nonetheless. All right. It is, it is must win game city. Josh Jacobs is looking like a really, really good play. And I like the Vegas uh, passing game also. I think it's a, I think this is a, total blowout spot for the for Vegas um Indianapolis I have to say they were game against New England for like for like a while you know mm-hmm. but eventually when your team can't move the ball at all you just you just put yourself in too big of a too big of a hole you know and then they give up a block punt whatever it is so New England I mean Indianapolis defense tried but I don't know I think this is a tough spot I think the Vegas I think Vegas can do some damage here so I like Jacobs I like um I guess Devontae Adams, I suppose. I like uh, Foster Moreau again. Um, and the only thing that would stop them from really smashing is the fact that this game could be kind of low scoring in general, you know, just because I don't know. I don't know what kind of resistance Indianapolis is going to be able to put up in this game. If you want to know the truth. So 
Um, I think Josh Jacobs probably the best play. Um, then he's alongside with of, of Kamara, my second favorite. Well, I have three. There's there's Etienne, uh, Jacobs, and Kamara are my three favorite running backs. And uh, I guess I'll leave the analysis at that. Yeah, I think these are all good points. I I I was on that Deion Jackson was a little bit of a sucker play last week um, on DraftKings at least. He was really cheap on FanDuel, so it was kind of harder to totally ignore him. I, I I would go back to him. The Raiders have I just don't stop the run. Um, I think this is a, a good spot for for getting a, a 5400 running back in. Uh, you could you could potentially play like Najee Harris, Deion Jackson, and maybe we can afford those receivers like the mm-hmm. uh, Devonte Adams or or Tyreek Hill or something like that because they uh, they they would offer us that you know the savings salary wise. I also think Jacobs is is a strong play here. Um, and all of the Raiders are going to look pretty decent. I think I think Adams is going to be low owned, but again, it's hard. You know, Adams versus Hill is going to be a, a a thing for those of us who have the money. If we if we are able to have the money to spend up, um, I, I think that Adams is right there. He had 17 targets last week and finally, you know, really back on track. It just feels like I don't know what they're playing for exactly. I'm a little worried about that part of it. So I, I'm leaning more just the running backs in this game. And then uh, Foster Moreau as a as a play that always looks like the greatest play, but yet still hasn't put up ten fantasy points. No, in no, he sure well, has. So, yeah. um, but I, I think the I think the running game is a little bit more interesting. I, I don't mind if you want to go with the Vegas passing game though, because Carr is super cheap. You've got Adams there, uh, Mac Collins or Renfro to go with it, or or Moreau. I, I think it makes a lot of sense. You could run back Deion Jackson would be my favorite run back for for Indy. Um, hard to get to the receivers for Indy with with Ellinger back there. But taking a shot on your guy, Alex Pierce, Alec Pierce or mm. Paris Campbell is not the worst idea at a cheap spot if you did want to stack this game up. All right, Sheets. Well, who'd have thunk Dallas would be a six-point favorite in Green Bay or whatever that is. Yeah. It's, uh, well, you know what? This is uh, this is a problem. Green Bay, is, <laughs> they have a problem right now. Um uh put up nine points against the against the or whatever against against Detroit. You know, it's uh not good. Um and Dallas is in, in really, really good shape. And I don't I don't know what to make of this. I will say this that I'll just put this out there on a point per dollar basis with just like in cash, like if you just do whatever based on early projections. I do have Aaron Rodgers as the best point per dollar quarterback. Um whatever that's worth. Doesn't seem like something I'd want to do. If you want to know the truth um, against okay. Dallas defense, but that's that that's what I have. The other guy I have that, that looks really really strong is Aaron Jones. I have him as whatever, but I, I have to obviously have to make sure that he's playing. He uh, he came out of the last game early, which yeah. is negative. Uh, he should be able to play this week. Okay, yeah. so I think that's probably going to be their best shot. You know, is to get Aaron Jones kind of going, and that, I think that's what Green Bay actually wants to do. You know, like I think Green Bay would prefer to run the ball. Um, so if they can get that going, um, I, I, I like that. And on the Dallas side, again, we don't know whether um, what's his name is back or not. What, what's going to happen with Zeke? I know everybody's like, just just sit him, just sit him. Doesn't matter, just sit him. Let let, let Power play, you know, whatever. Let him do his thing. And I don't have him projected that way right now, but I don't know. Power, he's not what he was last week, but he's still sixty five hundred. If he's if he's going to literally get all the work again in a positive game script. Uh, that might not be the worst idea in the world either. It's not my favorite game. Um, uh, I think it's more like compelling from a narrative perspective than much of anything else. Mm-hmm. But I guess if anything, I would say Aaron Jones would be my favorite player. Yeah, I, I, I'll if if Pollard is gonna go. If, if, I'm sorry, if we have no Zeke. I, I don't even think. I don't. I don't think you need to think too hard about this. Just play the Tony Pollard like everywhere. Okay. Be, I'll probably have 75 percent of them. Um, he's he's legitimately the better running back too. Like I mean. Actually, if Zeke plays, I don't even mind Pollard taking a shot there and just sort of betting that they give him the bulk of the of the load because he's clearly a better running back at this point than Zeke is. Zeke just doesn't have that burst like he used to. Maybe he can get you those three yards, but Pollard has got the big playability. Um, I think that the I think that there's some interesting wide receiver plays in this one. I I love Lazard actually. Even look, even as bad as they've been and as best as Rogers struggled, Lazard had ten targets last week, and now you get him with no. Uh, no Dobbs on the other, on the other side. It's, I think that's a really good spot to, to, to play Lazard. So he will be a guy I get into a lot of my lineups. And I think CD lamb is completely viable as well, but I'm not as excited about him. Um, and Michael Gallup as I am about the uh, Lazard play. Um, but I, Pollard will be everywhere for me. And then I'm, 
I'm okay with the Aaron Jones things. If he's even a little bit banged up though, and he's got a big contract, maybe, maybe you don't play him because again, what are they playing for? Um, they're basically done. And maybe they, maybe we're one week out of that. Maybe they need to lose one more time, but I, I, I certainly, uh, I don't, I don't feel comfortable playing a banged up Aaron Jones in a game where I don't know how much he'll play. I would just certainly jump on the other side and play Pollard. And uh, they may give a lot of AJ Dillon some work, not enough where I'm going to play him, but that's where I'm at for this one. And then Tanyan is going to show up as a really good tight end play. Uh, doesn't that seem to to get there either, <laughs> um, but it's uh 3,700. They're going to, you know, at least he's, at least he has, a, has, a, you know, he can get to 20 for you, but he's 3,700. That's basically all I can say about him, but uh, not my favorite game either. Just interesting to see that, uh, yeah, Dallas as a five and a half point favorite in Green Bay, and uh, oddly, Saberson has has Green Bay as the favorite, which is kind of interesting to note. Um, anyway, just throwing that out there, but yeah, not 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 my favorite one either. I do like the Lazard, and I do like the Pollard if there's no Zeke, and even if there is Zeke, possibly Arizona in the Rams sheets. What do you got? Okay, I'd like to say a couple of things. Um, the number of teams in the NFC who have scored less points than the Los Angeles Rams are zero. Um, <laughs> and yet they always project to score a bunch. <laughs> the Rams now, now, now in fairness, they, they have a buy and so they've had a buy and some teams haven't. Wait. Oh, they've already had their buy. Yeah. 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 Nonetheless, um, they've scored 131 real life points in eight games. Uh, and to put it in perspective, if you even include the AFC, the only teams that have scored less than them are the Broncos and the Steelers. Uh, right. That's literally it. Um, now they're playing the, the, the Arizona Cardinals who have this reputation for putting up a lot of points and they have not done that at all. Um, they have played, you know, very, very, I guess, low scoring. They, they, they got there. The, the over got there this past week in, in like total fluke. You know what I mean? Like at the end. Uh, that was an, another low scoring game. Now, when we talk about these games, the Rams, Arizona, for the last like, couple of years, we were like, we don't know whether this is going to show up as like, whether this can be score 60 points or 12, you know, like, and, yep. and, and that's always been with, with these games. And this is, listen, this is the way I think. So uh, the Rams, like you said, they're, they're the lowest scoring team in the, in, in the NFC, almost one of the lowest scoring teams in the NFL. And they're rating as my top overall stat. You know what I mean? Like, what, what, what do you do with that? You know what I mean? Like, and, and then you have Arizona who has scored like no, very few points either. And their rating is my third overall stat, you know? So, so do you, are you a sucker? Do you just, just freaking just, you know what? Screw it. You know, let's, let's let all the regression come in one, in one, in one game and just game stack it or just like, you know, see the writing on the wall, like last week that maybe the, like the Tampa Rams game is more what you're probably going to get, you know, as something like up the Rams and just avoid it. I'm probably going to go for it. You know, you have these two, you have these teams that, I mean, you talk about not season done, but look, you know, the Rams are three and five Cardinals are three and six. You have Seahawks at six wins already, you know, not mm -hmm. to mention the Niners are a game ahead of them. Mm -hmm. You know, Rams and Cardinals can talk themselves into believing they can catch Seattle, sure. right? Because they don't believe in Seattle, whatever. It makes sense. Right. Sure. So I think both teams are going to, are going to bring it, whatever they have to this game. I don't know what that is. But I think they're going to bring it. And the fact of the matter is, is that is that the Rams have Cooper Cup, right? Uh, and 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 the Cardinals have have DeAndre Hopkins, and not to mention other guys from both teams. Like if the Rams have Higby, they can you could go to whoever the Allen Robinson and, and Arizona. What's his name? Uh, was had a really nice game. Um, Rondell Moore, mm -hmm. Connor was back. You know, Ertz could do whatever. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna think I'm gonna be a sucker and go and go for this. So this is this is for now. Um, my, my, my top overall play is to just game stack this. If this ends up being popular again, it's, I, I, then I might not be able to do it, you know, just because of what I just said, but, but, uh, look, these, that's what these were the projections are showing me. And this is like you said, this is not the first time it's going to look this way, right? <laughs> Every other time they busted this whole season, but I don't know. I, 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 I'm willing to give it a shot. Is it possible that Cooper Cup is having a better year when you factor in the percentage of how much of their offense he is? Like, I know that he put up the, the ridiculous greatest, one of the greatest receiving years ever last year, but Cooper Cup has been just absolutely incredible for a team that can't score or move the ball. The Rams also yeah. worst of the NFL at plays at, at uh, yards per play. Um, the thing that worries me is that I'm afraid the Rams, 
against Arizona can run the ball, which I shouldn't be, but I, I'm a tiny bit afraid they're just effective enough to where it, maybe it kills a little bit of that shootout ish. Uh, yeah. I haven't shown the ability to run the ball, but Arizona is really bad against the run as well. Higby looks like an awesome smash play. The problem is this is not the Higby we were used to seeing. I mean, one target, six targets, two targets. Where's the guy with the double digit targets who we used to look for all the time. I don't really understand why he's not been more of a part of it, but Arizona terrible against tight ends. Uh, so I, I, I have, I will have probably a good portion of lineups with one of cup, uh, Higby, or I, I'm going to take the really long shot and play Van Jefferson. He did have five targets last week, no catches okay. hundred. If I want to get really we- weird and creative, I can possibly switch over to some things later. We'll see how this week pans out, but I think they try to get him a little bit more involved. Um, and sort of as like the, I think he should be their number two receiver. I just don't think Allen Robinson has any burst or any threat of going deep or anything anymore. So I, I would be using a little bit more of, of uh, Jefferson if I were the Rams personally. Um, but the, uh, and then the receiver, like I said, you play, you play one of Hopkins or more or both with Kyler. I don't have any problem with that. The, but Rondale Moore is, you know, uh, Hopkins being back has, has sort of launched Rondale Moore. Like, yeah. You know, 18 targets in two weeks. And if that guy gets targets, that, that could turn into a huge game in no time. And Hopkins is just basically gonna get gonna get a ton of work unless they're doubling him. They doubled him against the in, in Seattle, and he only had five targets, but the two previous games combined 27. Um, I would be happy to take some shots there. He had he doesn't he has a very up and down history with with Ramsey. Um, so that's just uh, pro- probably falls behind the other top receivers for me, but maybe Rondale Moore. The secondary receivers tend to beat us worse, so Rondale Moore and Greg Dortch are going to show up as some interesting large field plays m- more, m- more, more than Dortch. It's Dortch is sort of a throwing a you know, just praying for a miracle. Um, but he does have big play potential, so yeah, I, I could see doing it. I don't personally want to stack the Rams, but they are so cheap. Uh, they've been so bad and they're playing a, and they're playing a bad defense that they're familiar with. So maybe this is the breakout week, but I, I just personally have it behind the other games. Um, well, the thing is, is that you, you, you can't play. I mean, you really can't play cup and, um, Hopkins. and Hopkins. It's really hard to do. It's very difficult unless some like really big running back value opens up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to play um, the two other running backs at 54 and 5,500, play the cheapest defense and then try it. And then hope, something, else. hope something else opens up. Right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, certainly Higby is, is the play that makes the most sense. Um, yeah. 3,600. Um, so you, you could play, you could play whatever combination of that you want between Dorch, Hop, uh, Hopkins and, and uh, I, I would not avoid Hopkins. You know what I mean? He'd be the, in a weird way, I'd rather have Hopkins than Cub sort of. Mm-hmm. Um, um, if I can't have them both, but I, I yeah, listen, I, I, I'm I'm definitely gonna have some of this game. Uh, I might have the most of this game. I still haven't decided yet. I'm kind of like you. I didn't expect um, to like those one o'clocks as much as I ended up liking them. So let's we'll see. Yeah, we'll see exactly what I want what I want to do with that. Um, yep. I, I will say this: uh, defenses. Before we forget about it, um, my my two top defense like right now, uh, point per dollar in value and stuff. Boy, I laughed at this last week, but 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 last week, remember I said the Jets were like going to be the highest on yeah. defenses, right? Uh, this week, Minnesota is is uh, rates to be one of the highest uh, highest values, also against Buffalo. Mm-hmm. And the other one uh, is for me is Kansas City. Like those are the two that just you know whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have more than fifteen percent of either, just because yep. that's the play I play. But um, but those are the two I, I come up with. You want you want to kind of review what you like? Uh, I, I was with you. Yeah, I'll review my things. So I, the the main focuses will be the Buffalo, Minnesota, Detroit, Chicago, and Jacksonville KC games for me. I don't mind the the taking the weird shot on the Rams and and Cardinals. It feels like it. Maybe I want to do it in the afternoon slate, but not the main slate. Um, and then I I have so many plays that that stand out. It's so early in the week, but you know, outside of the games that I that I mentioned stacking. So none of the guys from those games, but. Um, Let's see, Miami wide receivers. Um, uh, I do think that the Barkley conversation is interesting. I like Pierce as a potential spend down. Kamara, Najee Harris. These are sort of the values that gets me into some of these these big spends. I love Lazard. Um, Will love Pollard. He'd be a staple for me. if the, He'd probably be my highest owned player if there's no Zeke. And even if Zeke plays, I'll still have him. Um, I like, I mean, Higby stands out, but it just feels like, you know, beating my head against the wall with him. And then I like the idea of Rondale Moore instead of Hopkins uh, in the later game. But that's not to mention all the guys I like from Buffalo. Obviously, the digs. And I like Thielen for, for Minnesota. I like the field stack with Mooney or 
or Claypool. I like the Detroit. Uh, uh, St. Brown is one of my top plays on the slate. Uh, for KC, Kelsey and Juju. For Jacksonville, Etienne stands out. So those, those are my main my main plays, but it's early in the week. That's, that's pretty much all I got for right now. Yeah. Um, Rams, Arizona, Buffalo, Vegas, um, Jacksonville, Detroit. I'm uh, Jacksonville, KC. I'm in Chicago, Detroit. Yeah. And then running backs, running backs, Kamara, Etienne, Jacobs, and then like the guys from the losing teams, like Pierce and and um, and Dion, uh, whatever his name is, Dion Jackson. Is that what it is? Yep. Yep. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I uh, don't have a take on defenses yet, but I, I don't mind the idea of, uh, I mean, it is weird to see the Minnesota 2200. So, I, I, you know, Texans are the other one for me that against uh, the Giants, but trying to pick on two teams that haven't really been bad offensively. It doesn't feel great. So anyway. All right, Cheats. Well, this is good. A good first look. And uh, I'll have stuff with uh, Goldie and Rody later this week. Uh, possibly another uh, sketchy one. I might do one with him as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll hopefully uh, be able to, to to improve even on Sheets' third place finish in the Millionaire Maker. And one of wow. us, uh, if, whether it's Sheets or one of us, hopefully somebody can do it for, from True DFS. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, good luck, everybody. And we'll see you a little more later this week.